that's true in your life, then you need to come on and do what the song says to do and bless the Lord. Is there anybody in the virtual house this morning that has come to bless the Lord? If so, put your hands together and bless him. Lift your hands and bless him. Lift your voice and bless him. Do your dance and bless him, for he is worthy, and he is worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah, 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 and amen. Oh yeah, wherever you are right there, I think that's a good place to put a praise on it. Wherever you are, right there, that's a good place to clap your hands. With wherever you are, don't worry about the fact that you're not in this physical house because you're in the house. It's a good place to give God the praise that he is due. I think he deserves more than whatever you're doing. I can't even see you. But I know that God deserves more than whatever you're giving him right now. So come on and give God what he is due. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah in the house today. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to this worship experience. I pray, we pray that you would come and worship with us. Don't come and spectate, but come and participate. Lift your hands, clap your hands, lift your voice, because God is indeed worthy. And do us a favor, go on in the chat, because Reverend Williams is on the other side waiting to chat with you, and go ahead and give us your prayer requests, but also share your praise reports, because somebody needs to hear how the Lord is moving in your life so that they can be reassured that God is indeed moving in their lives. Amen? Amen. Let us move higher in worship. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this worship experience. And God, we thank you for this season of change from summer to fall. God, we thank you that with you, change is always a possibility. God, if it's cloudy outside, we know that a sunny day is possible. God, if we're in a work situation that is not working for us, we know a better situation is a possibility. God, if we have a national leadership that is not working for us. God, we know that with you, better leadership is on the way because with you, all things are possible. And so, God, we invite and we invoke your Holy Spirit to be with us yet one more time. God, we ask that you would go to everyone under the sound of my voice or everyone who is viewing God on today and wrap your loving arms around them and let them know that you are yet on the throne and you are the God of possibilities. God, we ask for those who are mourning that they are confident. God, for those who are sick, that they are healed. God, for those who are in harm's way, that they are protected. For those who are lacking, that you will be there in their finances and you will be their provider of food and shelter, whatever they need, God, we thank you on today. Now, God, we ask that you will go to the preached word on today. Touch the vessel that will preach. And God, we ask that that word will accomplish everything that you intended on today. And God, now, we turn this worship experience over to you, God. We ask that you accomplish all that you wanted to do in us or around us. And if there is anything here that would hinder your move, God, we ask that you would remove it in the name of Jesus. God, we ask all of these things in that matchless name of Jesus. This is your servant's prayer, for we ask these things in Jesus' name again. Amen and amen.
Psalms 104 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name.
Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. I think that deserves a high praise. We just praise God to get that deserves a high praise in the church. Amen. That deserves a high praise in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for the technology of keeping us together in praise and worship. Let us prepare now for our gospel reading this morning. We'll be reading from the gospel according to St. Matthew, and we'll be reading chapter 21, verses 33 through 46, and I'll be reading from the New International Version, the NIV. And if you can, wherever you are, let us please stand for the reading and the hearing of the gospel. Amen. Praise God. Beginning at verse 33. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, 
They said to each other, this is the heir, come let us kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I'll tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Lord. He's able. We love you. He's able. Thank you. He's able. He's able. He's able. Give us glory. He's able. Give us honor. He's able. Give us praise. He's able. He's able. He's able. We thank you. He's able. For everything. He's able. All you've done. He's able. He's able. Lord, we love you. He's able. Lord, we thank you. He's able. Lord, we love you. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. We stand here. He's able. Thanking you. He's able. Giving you. He's able. He's able. He's able. Give us strength. He's able. Give us strong. He's able. Give us glory. He's able. 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 He's able, 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 he's able. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father. Come on, if you know the Lord is able. I said, if you know the Lord is able, put those hands together and bless the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's able to do far more exceedingly, abundantly more than we can think or imagine. God is able to pick you up and turn you around. God is able to heal your body. He's able, he's able, he's able, he's able. Yeah, God is able. Hallelujah. God is able. God is a That's a word right there. Uh, that if, if nothing else is said, uh, we need to have the assurance. <laughs> hey, glory, 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 glory. We need to, need to have the assurance that God is able. Thank you so much again uh, to this praise team and uh, the music ministry. Uh, thank you so very much. And to the choir. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, as many of you have already said in the comment section that we are just thankful to God for technology and how we were able to see uh, the faces of those whom participate in the ministry of worship. Uh, it was a blessing. Thank you so much. And, and know this. Know this, there's a, there, there's a lot of work uh, that take place in the background uh, to coordinate uh, such uh, a 
display of worship as we saw this morning. And so we are grateful to God for the awesome gift and gifts that God has given un, unto us. I am grateful. Um, and, and I tell you, if you keep declaring it and speaking it, it will happen. Um, and I have had the awesome privilege and honor of serving as pastor here for five years and I still declare and will continue to, to declare that this is the most fruitful congregation in all of Prince George's County. Um, God has truly blessed us and we are grateful and we do not take it do not take it for granted. Let's pray together. Eternal God, our creator, help me. Help me to do what you have assigned my hands, my mind, my body to do. You get the pleasure, you get the honor, you get the glory. Lord, help me to preach. Comfort those who are being challenged by life and challenge those who are comfortable. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Thank you so very much, my brothers and sisters. I'm excited that you are joining us this morning for this worship experience. And it is not, um, it is, it is not something that we take for granted because of the moment and season that we are in in our history. Uh, coming together in, uh, in any shape, form, or fashion um, to be connected is so, is so very, so very important. Um, living in a world and at a time where things are so disconnected. Uh, I want to call your attention this morning to uh, the New Testament uh, for open up the word of God in your Bibles, your smart device, devices to the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter. It is a very familiar uh, passage of scripture. Just want to lift up one verse uh, for your spiritual edification, and that is verse number seven. Uh, Philippians chapter four, verse number seven, reading from the New Living uh, translation here we find these words then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand his peace God's peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. God's peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I want to talk from the subject the impact of your worship, the impact of your worship, the impact of your worship. My brothers and sisters, it is not my intentions to be before you too long. As I reflect on the recent events in our society, in our world, in which I know we are all very familiar with. Therefore, I feel that there is no point today in rehashing 
what is already obvious. We are living in the midst of chaos. We're living in the midst of confusion and conflict. We are literally living in the midst of emptiness and selfishness and evil. Many of us have dealt with our own internal challenges, conflict, worry, and stress. As I reflected, as I meditated, I believe that the word that God has for me to share with you this morning is just the one simple word, peace. Peace. No doubt every one of us desires peace in our minds. Peace in our families, peace in our community, peace in our country, and peace in the world. When we think of peace, it conjures up a passive picture, one showing the absence of civil disturbance and hostilities, or possibly a person whom is free from internal and or external strife. Yet I would not be true to my God-given assignment not to point to you to the word of God because the biblical concept of peace is much larger and much deeper than our surface understanding of it. Paul was bringing his letter to a close as he wrote to the believers at Philippi. When Paul wrote this particular letter, he was writing for the primary purpose to thank them for the gift that he had that they had sent him while he was under house arrest in Rome. It was a letter of encouragement. It was a letter of joy. Paul, in his book, describes the joys of following Christ and persevering for the gospel and the secret of being content in any situation. Thusly, in reflecting on what so many people are going through, it is important that we maintain our peace. For if you don't hold on to your peace, what you see, what you hear, what you will experience in this world will drive you insane. Stress, my brothers and sisters, has not only proven to be destructive to our physical health. Stress is the large contributor to heart disease. Stress is a large contributor to a weakened immune system, migraines, ulcers, high blood pressure. Stress is also a destroyer of our spiritual and emotional well-being. Why, why, why do you say that, preacher? Because a mind that is occupied with worry, a mind that is occupied with fear, a mind that is occupied with stress is a mind that loses sight of the promises, that loses sight of the power, that loses sight of the provisions of Yahweh Shalom. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, I'm not talking about something that I read, but something that I know because there have been times and there are moments in my life when I don't feel blessed because I'm so stressed. When we are stressed, we lose sight of what God can do. 
uh, when we are and we are tempted to handle circumstances and situations with our own weak wisdom and strength. When we are stressed, we lose sight of the Lord's goodness and the Lord's blessings. And we are tempted to become negative and ungrateful. That's why in my understanding of the 23rd Psalms, when David said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And immediately after that, David said, He anoints my head with oil. And, and a long time ago, when I looked at the text, I asked God, God, why did you anoint David's head right after you prepared a table before him? in the presence of, of his enemies and the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said oftentimes as humans when our enemies are present ah, we lose sight of the blessings that's on the table so I had to anoint his mind so that his mind can stay focused on the blessing and not the haters help me here Holy Ghost because here we find the world cannot give you the world cannot teach you how to experience real peace the world can't supply peace that I'm talking about this morning yes you can meditate you can do yoga you can dance you can burn sage but at the end of the day God alone through his son Jesus Christ is the source of real peace and here we land at our text this morning, specifically verse number seven, and I'm out your way. The response to the action taken in verse number six uh, uh, is found in verse number seven. Uh, uh, what, what are you saying? In order, uh, as you all know, in order to get to verse number seven, uh, you have to go through verse number six. And Paul is inviting us to be in partnership with God to experience peace. In other words, Paul is letting us know that we have uh, uh, to take responsibility for our own peace. Let me put just a pen right there. Stop looking for people to give you peace. Stop looking for things to give you peace peace uh, and, and, and begin taking responsibility for your own peace and so he says in verse number 6 uh, in other words Paul was telling the saints at Philippi if you do this uh, then you will experience God's peace uh, which exceeds everything we can understand in other words it will blow your mind it's illogical you won't understand it when all around you is chaos when all around you is confusion when all around you is conflict and you chilling like a sanctified villain uh, you won't be able to understand it because God's peace exceeds anything that we can understand and not only does God's peace exceeds logic but God's peace will stand watch over your heart and your mind uh, my brothers and sisters, Paul was saying God's peace will stand watch over your emotional well-being. God's peace will stand watch over your mental well-being. You will not have just a moment with God's peace, but you will have an experience. And this peace cannot be explained. And so Paul shares with us two basic yet powerful things that we as children of God must do in order to have this God-given experience of peace. I want to say that one more time because somebody might be looking for things that are very profound in the scripture. Paul shares two most basic yet powerful things that we as children of God must do in order to have this God-given experience of peace. I know 
know that it's not profound yet in all that you are experiencing it is the simple things that God tells us to do that will make the most impact uh, because you are dealing with profound situations uh, we sometimes try to find profound solutions uh, and the solutions is not found in things being profound but it's in the simple things of God so God sent me before you today to remind you of these two simple actions that you can make that has a profound effect on your life yes even in this season of pandemic the first thing that Paul tells us to do is to pray can I just remind the saints and those of you who will listen that, that God wants us to talk to him. God wants to talk to us. The power of prayer should never be underestimated. The power of prayer is not the result of the person praying. Rather, the power of prayer resides in the God who's being prayed to. Oh, my brothers and sisters, somebody I read in the scripture when Jesus was on the cross, there was a thief on his right who prayed and said Lord when you enter into your kingdom remember me so when persons want to question whether or not God hears a sinner's prayer oh my God you don't have to look far because I once was a sinner and I prayed to God don't let this world fool you to thinking that you have to be perfect in order to call on the name of Jesus you can be distressed you can be strung out you can be caught up but when you call on that name when you go to God in prayer no matter the person praying it's the passion behind the prayer it's the purpose behind the prayer God will answer prayer won't he do it don't we serve a God who will answer prayer and that's why the test the Bible says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face turn from their wicked ways guess what I will do I will hear from heaven and I will speak shalom to their land I speak healing to their land and so my brothers and sisters we cannot access this power by using magic formulas we cannot access this power by using magic words can I remind you that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18 he says truly I say to you whatsoever help me Holy Ghost that you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven here it is if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask it will be done. In other words, God is saying, where there are two or three gathered in my name, there I will be in the midst. And sometimes when you need God to move in your life, you don't need a whole lot of people. You just need two or three who knows the power of prayer. You don't need a crowd. You just need two or three who will surround you in prayer. And then he tells us the second thing, the second key in order to experience real 
peace uh, is to thank God for what God has done. Lord, help me. The word thanks, beloved, is a small word, but it has a powerful meaning. Yes, and whenever we don't hear the word thank you, it will distraught and it will dumbfound us because my grandmother taught me a long time ago that people don't have to do nothing for you. Lord have mercy. But whenever somebody does something for you, you ought to tell them thank you. Well, here we stand in the midst of this pandemic and what is a child of God's response in order to experience a peace of mind where Paul says you got to pray and you got to tell God thank you for the things that the Lord has done. I know things are not perfect but you got something to thank God for. I know things are not how you want them to be but Paul is saying you got something to thank God for. Well when I thought about pray and thanksgiving the Lord woke me up this morning and said tell the people that in the midst of the pandemic never underestimate the power of their worship and thusly we get to our subject because when we think about prayer and we think about thanksgiving that's all it is is worship yes and so God sent me by here this morning to let you know that your worship in the midst of all of what's going on will have impact and that's why Andre Crouch in his song entitled My Tribute penned these words and I'm moving out your way how can I say thanks for the things you've done for me things so undeserved but yet yeah Lord that's the shout right there is when he said yet you give to prove your love for me the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that I am and ever hope to be I owe it all to you to God to God be the glory for the great things he has done yes in the midst of quarantine God is worthy yes in the midst of the pandemic God is worthy yes in the midst of doubt and confusion God said in his word be thankful thank me in the midst of the valley thank me in the midst of the pandemic because when you worship me yes I will keep your mind I will keep your heart in perfect peace if you want peace lift up your hands and worship God yes because there's impact there's impact in your worship heaven responds when you worship yes heaven responds when you worship and God says my peace I lead to you not that the world gives and I'm thankful because the world can't 
take it away so we can sing this joy this joy that I have the world Donald Trump yeah didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away thank God for peace peace shalom Yahweh Jehovah peace in the midst of the pandemic peace in the midst of the pandemic God said peace in the midst of the pandemic I'm trying to stop but God says peace in the midst of the pandemic my peace I give in the midst of the pandemic Go ahead, speak peace. Uh, go ahead, declare peace. Uh, go ahead, shout peace. Uh, peace. I said peace in the midst of the pandemic. God said, tell them peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I speak peace, I declare peace, I decree peace, peace in your mind, peace in your body, peace in your spirit, peace, peace in your home, peace on your job, peace in the school, peace. have to take responsibility for our peace. Stop waiting for God to drop it in your lap as if it's the snap of a finger, the wave of his hand. God has invited us to take ownership and to participate with God <laughs> in shifting the atmosphere. Uh, in shifting situations. We have a responsibility. And Paul said to us in our text this morning, if you worship, <laughs> God will give you peace. <laughs> if you pray and you have gratitude and thanksgiving for what God has done, because you know what? The enemy, ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. The enemy wants you to focus on what is happening now, that you forget about the blessings that God has prepared for you in the presence of your enemies. Isn't that strange about God? Is that God throws a party for you, but he doesn't invite your friends, he doesn't invite your loved ones, but he invites your enemies. Folks who said you wouldn't make it. Folks who said you wouldn't amount to anything. And when they show up and they are ever present, uh, don't, God says, don't you forget. Uh, uh, don't you forget I prepared this table. Uh, your cup's running over because I prepared this, this table. Uh, 
I, I threw this party on your behalf. So, so, so don't block them no more on social media. Let them keep, uh, let them keep watching so they can see how God's going to bless you, how God is blessing you. You keep them around because scripture says that, that he will anoint your head with oil. He'll give you peace. He'll give you peace of mind. You, you won't even be thinking about what they attempted to do, what, they, what the world is trying to do. What, what, he'll, give you, he'll give you peace. Now this peace, and I'm through. I said I was through 10 minutes ago, uh, but the Holy Spirit won't let me sit down. Uh, the, he says, he closed it out. He says, as you live in Christ, living is active. And, and, and so I, I want to say this peace isn't chilling and relaxing and Resting, don't get peace and rest confused. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, we, we, we must rest, but 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 we're not sitting on our uh, on our hopes and our dreams and and our desires. We are actively participating, we are living, we're in partnership with God. I pray that that's revelation for some of you. That God's not going to move until you move. Uh, and throughout scripture, it has proven that with God and God's people, nothing is impossible. And God has always united with his people to cause a shift, to cause impact. That's why I said in the comment section, listen, together and with God, we can make impact. And so let's take ownership of our peace. Let's take responsibility of our peace. Because in order to get to seven in the text, you got to do what verse six says. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. And we give God all of the glory and all of the thanks. I want to lift you up in prayer. I want us to pray together. Uh, praying together is something that we've taught here that is not you waiting on me to pray, but it's us praying, praying together praying together praying together if if nothing else uh, you touching and agreeing with what i'm saying but your mouth is not closed if we are praying together we can bombard heaven with our prayers and our praise and while we are praying together I want you to open up your mind, your heart, your body, your home, your living room, your den, your car, wherever it is that you may be. Open it up for God's peace to enter. I'm not talking about something that uh, I just read, but something that I have experienced. Uh, that when I get stressed, uh, I didn't tell her. Sometimes I'm, I, you know, that saying, "I'm too blessed to be stressed." Well, that that might be true sometimes. Uh, and then there are times where you feel too stressed. You you so stressed that you don't feel blessed. <laughs> 
And in, in the midst of those times, that's when you have to command your mind. You have to command your flesh. Uh, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise will continually be in my mouth. And so I want to pray. I want us to pray together. And, and as we pray together, we're going to be inviting God's peace. Mm. Yeah, Sister Teresa, God to give you peace in the midst of hearing about sickness. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, God, God will give you. It, it, it's illogical. It, it, it doesn't really make sense to our human minds. But in the midst of turmoil, God will give you peace. In the midst of loss, peace. Uh, we are praying. We're praying for you and your mother-in-law. We're praying for you, Sister Lee. We're praying. We're praying for your daughter. We're praying. We're praying uh, for her new baby girl. We are praying for you, Brother High Smith. We are praying. We're praying for you. We're praying. We're praying for you. Uh, we're praying for you, Ricky. Yeah. Uh-huh. We're praying. We are praying for you. We're praying for you. Uh, we're praying for you, Mother Horton. We're praying for you, Mother McGee. We're praying. Yes, we are praying. We are praying. We are praying for you. Right now, come on, let's begin praying together in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the things you've done. Thank you for opening up doors. Thank you for healing bodies. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for your peace that passeth all understanding. And now, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you will saturate our minds. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will saturate our bodies. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will separate, saturate our spirits with your peace, God. Yes. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes, God, allow your Holy Spirit uh, woo -hoo -hoo. Mm -hmm. Yes, your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit, God, uh, we invoke and invite it now. Uh, Come into our dwelling place. Uh, come into our homes. Yeah. God, we ask for peace. Uh, not the peace that the world gives, but the peace that comes from you. Real peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Ha, I feel God's power, yeah. Thank you for healing, thank you. Thank you for taking pain away, thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we don't take it for granted. We are grateful, God. We're grateful, we're grateful, we're grateful. Oh, we're grateful, we're grateful, we're grateful. <laughs> Ooh, we're grateful, 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 Lord. In Jesus' name. <laughs> In Jesus' name. It is so in Jesus' name. <laughs> Ooh. Amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Come on, declare the victory. Come on. Come on, shout unto the Lord. 
Hallelujah. God will give you peace. <laughs> that just won't leave my spirit. It's just uh, peace in the midst of the storm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> my, 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 my. Yes. Sometimes the spirit, Sister Candice, will just have you making melody. <laughs> uh, Sometimes the spirit will have you making melody, melody. <laughs> Woo! Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. He'll give you peace. Go ahead. Y'all go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, God. Let's prepare. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Let the Lord you, you he'll give you peace. <laughs> My, 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 my. Let's prepare for communion. Let's prepare for communion. We are so grateful for those who came this morning and received your communion and those whom were unable. We invite you even right now on this first Sunday in this 10th month. <laughs> Y'all hear me? We, we are at the, we're at the last watch of 2020. <laughs> uh, we, we're at the last watch of 2020. <laughs> we have so much to be thankful for. And so on this first Sunday in October, we pause as we always do to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on Calvary. The sacrifice of his body and his blood. to save us. And I declare he got up from the grave on the third day saying all power is in my hands. So now I need you to go ye therefore and make disciples. Every day I wake up, I ask God, wash me over again. Uh, I ask the Lord to wash me and cover me with his blood because the blood that he shed on Calvary, uh, it still works. In spite of uh, the thorn that was given to me in my flesh, God says my grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. And so my brothers and sisters, as we are preparing for to remember the Lord's passion, to remember the Lord's sacrifice, to remember the Lord's shedding of his blood. God, we ask, we confess that we are not worthy, but thank you for your grace. 
Thank you for your blood that you shed on Calvary to save a sinner like me, to save a sinner like me. Thank you. And so, God, we take this body, we drink this blood in remembrance of you. We are thankful. <laughs> we got thanksgiving bubbling up all over in our hearts and our minds. So, Lord, cleanse us even the more. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, my brothers and sisters, I ask now that you take the body. And symbolic of what happened to the body of Jesus, I ask that you break it. <laughs> and let us now take and eat together. That it may preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. And then take the cup. The cup that represents the blood that Jesus shed. It wasn't spilt, but he shed it for the forgiveness of our sins. And let's drink together. Wash me all over again in the precious blood. Wash me all. Wash me all. Wash me all over again. In that prayer, precious blood, wash me over again. Wash me over. Yes, Jesus. presence. We thank you for his spirit. We thank you, God, for visiting and tabernacling with us in this worship experience. We pray God's blessings on each one of you. We have now come to the time in our worship experience for our worship giving. Bless the Lord, somebody. Praise God. Thank you, Turner, for your obedience. Thank you for your steadfastness. Thank you for your commitment to this ministry. You continue to sow a good seed in this ground, and we're grateful. There are a few ways you can offer your tithes and your gifts to us. You can do it through our website, turner-ame.org, through cash app, dollar sign, Turner AME, through Givelify by searching the church's name, or through the U.S. Postal Service by dropping in the mail. You see it on your screen. If you're streaming with us, you can click that giving button right at the top of your header. We thank you for blessing our missionary society. They do have a special offering, a special request of $100 from each member of Turner to support their work and our Dorcas Queen. We ask that you bless our YPD. 
our scholarship ministry. If you've never tried tithing today, if you've never tested God in your stewardship, we ask that you step out on faith and do that. Let us pray. Father God, for this day, we give you thanks, God. We give you praise, God. Thank you, God, for your spirit, God. Thank you, God, for showing up and manifesting great things in our life, God. We ask that you please bless this offering, God, may be used for kingdom building here at your church. We want to make you proud, God. We're aiming to please you. We're aiming to be the church that you would have us to be, God. We thank you. We bless you. And we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Did our hearts not burn today? We thank God for what our eyes have seen, for what our ears have heard, for what our hearts have felt. We thank God for the word that went forth today, and we thank God for the vessel for our pastor who allowed God to use him mightily. Now, let us prepare to be dismissed. Receive now the benediction. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. May God's peace follow you to your rocky places, meet you in your dark places, and keep you in your uncertain places. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit, and we collectively declare in the Lord.